Hi students, how are you? So we were discussing about cells. So we saw Robert Hooke discovered cell in 1665 and the basic unit of a living thing is cell. And in last class we discussed about the number of cells and we saw that organisms are uh, divided into two groups based on the number of cells. They are classified as unicellular organisms and multicellular organisms. And today we can discuss about the shape of cells. So we can look about, discuss about the shape of cells. So we know organisms differ in their size, shape, number of cells and all. So today we can look at the shape of the cells. In last class we saw that amoeba and paramecium are unicellular organisms. Now what about the shape of amoeba? Ah, amoeba does not have a definite shape. But uh, usually most of the other organisms have a definite shape. And this amoeba takes food using finger-like extensions of cell surface called as pseudopodia. So pseudo means what? Pseudo means fans. Then podia means what? Feet. So if anybody asks you to draw amoeba, you can draw it in any way because it does not have a definite shape. And if any food particle, we just near it, what it do? It will change its shape. It will extend its uh, body part. And this uh, false foot like structure is called the pseudo. Podia. So it will extend its body part, then what? It will cover the food particle and the food particle enters into its body. So it has false food like structures called pseudopodia. Projections of varying length protrudes out of its body. These projections are called pseudopodia. Pseudo means false and podia means feet. These projections appear and disappear as amoeba moves or feeds. Now you can watch the movement of amoeba. an organism which can change its shape. Now are there any cells in our body which can change its shape? Ah yes there is. You know which are the blood cells? Ah, RBC, WBC and platelets. Among this WBC or white blood cells in human blood is an example of a single cell which can change its shape. So here WBC that is a cell in our body. But amoeba is an organism, a single celled organism which can exist independently. And we know there are uh, millions, more than millions of cells in our body. Now what about the shape of all these cells? Now what about the shape of these cells? Different cells are performing different functions in our body. So based on the functions, the cells have different, different shapes. So the shape of the cells are related to the functions of that cell. Generally the cells are round, spherical or elongated. But we can see that our muscle cells are long and pointed at both ends. So our muscle cells are long and they are pointed at both ends. So this shape is called the spindle shape. So what is the shape of our muscle cells? Muscle cells have a spindle shape. That is they are pointed at the 
end. Okay. Then uh, what about uh, which is the longest cell in our body? Ah, the longest cell in our body is nerve cell or neuron. So the le longest cell in our body is the neuron or nerve cell. And uh, what is its shape? It has a cell body. Then it has so, small, so many small branches. And one uh, long branch also. So small, small branches called dendrites. And a long branch called axon. So this is a uh, uh, neuron or nerve cell is long. And it is branched also. So we have already discussed that the structure of the cells are related with their function. So why, uh, what is the function of nerve cell? Why it is long and branched? Ah, the function of nerve cells are uh, to carry the messages. So for example, if you look at a bright object, what happens? We will close our eyes. So when we look at the bright object, message from our eyes goes to the brain. Then the brain will give back the message to close your eyes to the muscles of the eye. Then you will close the eye. So the message is carried from our eyes to the brain. And the reply, the message is also carried from our brain to the muscles of the eyes. So these messages are carried by our nerve cells or our neurons. Uh, there are sensory neurons which carry the message to the brain. And motor neurons carry back the message to our uh, muscles also. Or uh, if you touch a hot object, you know, suddenly you will take back your hand. So the message from our skin at the tip of our finger, the skin is carried to our spinal cord. And spinal cord will give back the message to take back your hand to the muscles of our uh, hand. Then we will take back our hand. So these messages are received and transmitted or carried by our new cell. That's why they are long and branched. So it is about one meter long and all. So the messages, it will receive message from this tip and carry through the axon, go to the tip. Then here uh, there will be the next neuron will be present here. Then from this neuron it is transferred to the next one. Like that they are very long cells. So very fast it will go through the uh, nerve cell. Okay, so this shows that the shape of the cells are related to their functions. Then we know sperm cells. Sperm cells, what is the shape? Uh, they have a head-like structure and a tail-like part. Then ovum, what is the shape? It is round in shape. So different cells have different shapes based on their functions. Now, what is giving shape to the cell? Uh, the cell is surrounded by a membrane called cell membrane or plasma membrane. So, if this is a cell, it is surrounded by a membrane called cell membrane or plasma membrane. So, the contents of the cell are enclosed in this membrane. So, what is giving shape to the cell? Cell membrane is giving shape to the cell. So this membrane provides shape to the cells of plants and animals. So which part of the cell gives its shape? Ah, it is cell membrane. But in plant cells we can see in addition to the cell membrane there is one more membrane. So outside this cell membrane there is one more membrane in the plant cell. So plant cells have one more membrane and that membrane is called cell wall. Okay, so plant cells ha have two membranes. Outer membrane is called cell wall and the inner membrane is called cell membrane. And this cell wall is made up of a substance called cellulose. So this is the picture of a plant cell. About the contents we can discuss afterwards. But animal cell, uh, how we can draw? Animal cell have only one membrane and that membrane is cell membrane. Okay, so this is an animal cell. So in animal cell, uh, the cell membrane is giving it the shape and structure. So in plant cells, 
cell wall is giving uh, shape and rigidity to the cell. And uh, uh, bacteria, you know bacteria. Bacteria also have cell wall. So bacteria and plant cells have cell wall. But animal cells, uh, 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 in animal cells, cell wall is absent. Animal cells are covered by a cell membrane only. Okay, so in animal cells, cell membrane is giving its shape. In plant cells, cell wall and cell membrane is giving it shape. Uh, we saw that the number of cells in different uh, organisms is different. In some organisms it may be one, uh, some it may be a thousand, some it may be million, some it may be trillions. Different number of cells are different in different organisms. Then we saw that the shape of cells are also different. Based on their function, the shape of the cells are also different. Then next we can discuss about the size of cells. So, what about the size of cells? Size of cells. And the size of cell are, cells are also different. Different cells, uh, the size is different. So, the size of the cells has no relation with the size of the body of the animal or plant. So, sometimes the animal body size will be very large. But that doesn't mean their cells are very big. Or the plant may be very big and tall. That doesn't mean that that plant have very big cells. So the size is not related with the size of the body of the plant or animal. We know elephant is larger than a rat. So are the cells in an elephant larger than the cells in a rat? No, the size of the cells are not related with the size of body. So, elephant and rat may have cells with same size. Then how they have a difference in the size of the body? Ah, the difference in the size of their body is due to the difference in number of cells. So, elephant have more number of cells. So, its body is larger in size than the uh, body size of rat. But the size of each cell in their body is same. Uh, the difference is due to the difference in the number of cells in their body. So, elephant have larger number of cells in its body than rat. So, the size of the body of elephant is larger than the size of the body of a rat. So, here the size of cells in uh, almost all organisms are uh, same. The size of the cells are related to its function. For example, we know that Nerve cells are the longest cells because of its function. Uh, its function is to carry messages. So due to its function, the nerve cell in elephant and also the nerve cell in rat are long and branched. So it is not smaller in the body of rat and larger in the body of elephant. Due to its function, uh, both uh, in elephant and rat, the nerve cells are longer. So the size of the cells are Related to its function only, it is not related to the size of the body. The size of the body is uh, related to the number of cells. If, uh, if an organism has a larger number of cells, they ha will have a larger size uh, of body. If they have less number of cells, the size of their body will be less also. Okay. So we saw that the number of cells are different, shape of cells are different and the size of cells are also different. So the cells differ in their number, shape and size. Clear now? Okay. Bye.